So welcome to our WOW Women of Wisdom series. I am so excited that this is our conversation where we speak with amazing women who have wonderful insights to share with us about how we can live healthier lives, happier lives, and more rewarding lives. So I'm your host, Dr. Keisha Moore of Life and Focus Coaching. And today I'm so honored to be joined with our fitness coach, Melissa Prickett of Excel with Mel. So welcome, Mel. Thanks, Dr. Moore. I appreciate the opportunity to be on today. We're so excited to have you. Now, I really wanted to speak with you because fitness is something that um, I personally believe is really a core part of having a healthy and happy life. But I wanted to get your thoughts as an expert fitness coach. Why do you see fitness as really critical to a um, successful life for all women? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think a lot of people have chosen to not make fitness a priority in their life because of everything else is that, that's going on. So work, family, faith, finances, you know, all of the things that, that grab your attention. And fitness seems to be the thing that people leave off if there's not enough time. And I know how they feel because I've felt the same way, right? And I've, I've been there, but I've realized that if people would just take better care of themselves, they would feel better about themselves and they would make the time to make fitness a priority. And I will tell you this is I think time is the number one thing that people will say that is limiting them from reaching their, their fitness goals. Mm -hmm. But I was actually reading an article um, from the Center for D Disease Control and Prevention, and they were stating that two thirds of American adults are either overweight or obese. Yes. And part of that is also that 80% of Americans uh, are not uh, meeting the, the industry standard requirements for exercise which is 150 minutes a week. Mm -hmm. And so why I recognize that people don't find time to exercise and that's a lot of times the biggest struggle. I just want to break it down real quick and then I'll, and I'll kind of conclude with this is 150 minutes equals 22 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. So I know I was super busy today, but I, uh, I fit in my 22 minute workout, mm -hmm. 22 minute hardcore, and I got it done. And if I did 22 minutes, seven days a week, that's 150 minutes. Mm -hmm. 150 minutes is two and a half hours. What movie did you watch last night or last week or TV show? And so if you break it down and you say five 30 minute workouts is the equivalent of 150 minutes, which is also two and a half hours or the length of a movie, it's not necessarily that people don't have time, it's that they don't have the priorities in order. And when I tell people that a lot of times they're like, mm. Yeah, I watched a lot of movies last week. So it's really just making it a priority and, and, and starting to feel better about yourself, if that makes sense. Yes, thank you so much for breaking that down because I always say to people, you have enough time for everything that's important to you in your life, and, but it's for you to decide what's important to you. And as you just shared with us, you know, it doesn't take hours in the gym um, for us to live a healthy life, but it does take making it a priority, making ourselves a priority. As you said, if we care for ourselves, then we will give this gift of health to ourselves and to our families um, who want to see us around and be healthy and enjoy our time with them. Right. Now, I'm interested in how we go about accomplishing our fitness goals. So let's say you know, our audience is saying, you know what, you're absolutely right. I'm ready to go and make myself a priority and make my fitness and my health a priority. How do I know that the goal that I'm setting is appropriate, especially when what I'm hearing all around in the media is that really what I need to do is be super skinny. And um, I want to make sure that I'm a double zero. And so that's my fitness goal. So come on, Mel, show me how I can get a double zero. What do you say to those women? Stop listening to what other people tell you that you should look like or feel like. 
do what works for you. Um, you know, I'll speak from experience and, you know, those are the, those of those people that work with me get to know me really well on a personal level. But, uh, you know, I was an athlete as a kid, I was super skinny and, uh, I found out that when I moved out on my own and made my own food, I had to either live in an unhealthy body, an overweight body, which was my body was prone to that, Mm -hmm. or I had to exercise a lot to combat what I was eating. And, um, you know, I think that people just need to recognize what their body is capable of. You know, there are the extremes where you can work out two hours a day and get to that size. But I can tell you from experience, you're not happy. I remember just a little bit before my 40th birthday, I said to myself, I need to get to this particular number. This is the number that I'm going to get before my 40th birthday. Okay. And, uh, and it was about five pounds. And I, I did a lot of things that I'm not proud of. All right. I did a lot of things before I learned about health and fitness the right way that, uh, that I used to get to that, that number on the scale. And you know what? When I got there, wasn't happy. Yeah. Didn't fulfill me. And I actually wanted to, to, to get a different number on the scale. And so, you know, if you look at those magazines, you know, uh, you know, Jennifer Lawrence, as an example, you know, she's a strong, beautiful, confident, gorgeous woman, but even they airbrush her. Okay. So that's not really her. That's not really what she looks like. They, they take her waist and they make it super tiny and they take her head and they make it super big. And that's not reality. And so it's not about skinny. It's not about its size. It's not about a number on a scale. It's about being healthy. It's about jumping out of bed in the morning and feeling great about how you feel about yourself. It's about kicking, kicking butt and doing your workout and sweating and feeling awesome afterwards. And it's about living a better life and being a great example for your family, for your friends and and for yourself, you know? So I know that's a long-winded answer, but I'm truly passionate about it. You know, I spent most of my 30s um, on the couch, overweight, very unhealthy, and I was exhausted all the time. But once I I figured it out, once I got my butt up off the couch and I started doing something, that's when I started to feel good about myself. And and I'm always a work in progress, you know, and I'm not a size zero. But I have, you know, underneath my clothes, I have nice muscles. I'm happy. With what I have, <laughs> what I have achieved, and it just makes me feel good. So, and I don't worry about the number on the scale. I don't worry. I just worry about how my clothes fit and how I feel every day. And that's what I want people to recognize is they can do that too. They just need to choose to start and keep with it. Yes. I love that you're talking about all the various um, benefits that we get from working out that we often don't think about, right? So we think about, oh, you know, our waist is going to look like this, or our biceps are going to be like this. But you're talking about we have more energy. We feel better about ourselves. We have more confidence in how we walk around, walk into a room. There's so many positive benefits that come when we're working out. And I know for myself, like I think about my workout as sweat therapy, right? There's some things that are going on that I need to get out of my system. And exercise is such a useful tool in a productive way that doesn't get me in trouble with the law and (laughs) family or other people that, you know, I might have to work through some things. And, And also just realizing like when I've done a really hard workout that I feel like I've accomplished something and I can draw on that strength when there's something that's really challenging at work. Cause I know like I, I can put in that hard work and I can experience success and that's what I have done. Right. Yeah. So I think you offer us such a valuable opportunity to see that, yeah, working out with you is going to improve our health, but it's going to improve so much more. There are all these additional bonuses that we get with that. Yeah. And you're right. Stress relief is a huge part of it. Um, and, and I'm glad that, that you see that as well, because, you know, it's not very healthy to go punch a wall, but you can certainly, you know, punch the air and, you know, get your stresses out, and, you know, and then feel better about yourself. Yes. And it's not good on your fist either. <laughs> So what do you see as some of the challenges that women experience in particular in trying to meet these fitness goals? So you've already talked about time and how 
in one sense, time might seem to be an obstacle, but it's really not about time. Mm -hmm. So are there other challenges that you see that um, emerge for women when we're trying to um, get in shape and become more fit? Sure. I mean, that's why so many people don't do it, right? Because, um, you know, there's a lot of reasons why people aren't uh, starting or continuing on with their fit fitness regimen. But a lot of times it really comes down to two things that I see on a regular basis. Um, patience and consistency, which is one thing. Okay, so patience and consistency and then lack of knowledge. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'll start with, with patience and consistency. Patience meaning taking, you know, recognizing that you haven't put the weight on overnight, so it's not going to come off overnight either. So a lot of people are out there looking for a quick fix. They're looking for... Um, something that's going to help them, you know, lose 10 pounds before they go to Thanksgiving. You know, that's just unrealistic uh, just a couple days in advance. And so um, people need to recognize that it's going to take time. It's going to be hard in the beginning. And if it's even not hard after the beginning, you're not doing it right. It, you need to push yourself and staying consistent with it. You know, I see so many people that they have a goal. Let's say that they come in and they have a 90 day plan to lose, you know, 25, 30 pounds. And if they don't have a support network, somebody there who is uh, either meeting them at the gym or encouraging them with a daily text or whatever, unfortunately 80 to 90% never complete that 90 days, never reach that goal, never stay on it long enough to achieve the results that they want. So I would say patience to see the results and consistency to keep going is number one. And number two is really knowing what to do, right? There are so many different ways that people can go about losing weight, getting healthy. Um, and, and I think a lot of people are really confused because as kids, we moved more, you know? Uh, I know I did. I was always on the go and I never sat down and now as adults um and now as adults we need to um, we need to recognize that our lives are mostly sitting unless we have a construction job or something like that uh, we are constantly on the go we are constantly uh, I'm sorry we're constantly sitting we're sitting in our cars you know we're we're sitting watching television and we're not moving enough and so finding that one thing or trying a couple of different things to, to get into that mode of what works for me. Okay. And so whether or not it's, you know, going on Google and, and searching, you know, the, you know, whatever else everybody else is doing or working with a friend, you know, asking a friend what they're doing or working with a coach, something to, to figure out what is going to get them started and what is going to uh, help them, uh, you know, achieve their goals. I don't, I can't tell you how many women they come to me and excuse me, my nose is running and they say, um, I just got a gym membership and I went to the gym and I got on the elliptical and I went really fast for 40 minutes. Oh, that was so hard. And that's the only thing I knew how to do. Cause you know, the weights intimidated me and the treadmills were all full and they do that for a week, four days, five days, and they don't get results girl, you got to do something different, <laughs> you know? So it's really investigating. There's more to just the elliptical at the gym, uh, really investigating what's out there, what's going to help you. And, um, you know, just start somewhere, you know? So I think it's really the two things, the patience and the consistency, and then, you know, not knowing what to do. That's, that's a challenge for so many people. Thank you. And I'm, I'm so glad that you pointed out that not knowing what to do um, because I feel like there's just such a uh, wealth of information, but almost in a way that it gets really confusing about what we are supposed to do. And especially for people who, you know, may not have had a long history of exercise or being an athlete. Like I was an, a distance runner. And so, yeah, I know I can run, but I don't want to run anymore. My knee's a shot. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I... I have been intimidated when I show up at the gym, you know, I don't know how to use these machines. You know, it seems like a very masculine space and I don't know 
what to do. So how do you help people figure out, you know, should we be doing yoga or should we be lifting weights or how do I really challenge my body? How do I learn the skills that are necessary when, when I go online, I'm almost overwhelmed with the amount of information and the different um, kind of almost like uh, religious proselytizing around what one thing everybody should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Um, you know, it really starts with food. You know, I'm a fitness coach, but health and fitness overall. And really 80% of your results, 80% of how you are going to feel about yourself is a result of what you put in your body. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I like to just really simplify it down to a syllable, J-E-R-F, just eat real food. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, starting with that without having to go on a program to, to do anything special, shop the outer aisle, you know, stop going for the boxes of stuff. Stop going for the frozen things. Just eat real food. What does that mean? That means protein on your plate, lots of vegetables, healthy fats, and some fruit. If you can do that at every meal, you're going to start to feel better about yourself. And then you're going to start to say, you know what? You need to know more and you're going to start to do your research mm -hmm. and you're start, going to start to realize what portion control means and how much of each food you should be eating. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it starts with just eating real food. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you hear all those diets out there and I'm not going to bash anyone in particular, but where they give you prepackaged food, mm -hmm. first of all, that stuff tastes like junk to me. I'm going to keep it clean here. <laughs> Uh, cause my, my palate is so clean from eating real food, mm -hmm. but, uh, anytime somebody says eat these, you know, prepackaged meals, run, run fast and run far because you could do that and you could have success. But as soon as you stop, you're going to gain the weight back because it doesn't teach you anything. All right. Mm -hmm. So you need to find something that's going to teach you how to eat well. And I will give you guys, this is like the biggest advice I can give you. And I know tomorrow a hundred of you are going to go buy this is go buy the whole 30 book, you know. Uh, I'm in no way associated with this book, but you can buy it on Amazon for 20 bucks, read it, and take some of the principles and decide if that's something you want to do. Um, that is a great way to start, you know. There's a lot of other things out there that um, start to really help you develop the skills necessary to recognize what you should be putting in your body. So I know we've all heard of the 21-day fix. I personally believe in that for some people mm -hmm. as an opportunity to recognize what you should be putting on your plate and in your body every day. And then in terms of exercise, it has to be something you're going to stick with. Okay. So if, and I don't necessarily, and everybody's different. I don't necessarily think going to the gym is the answer. There's the great outdoors. I personally love swimming. Mm -hmm. Um, there is at home workouts, you know, no matter what it is, it has to be something that you enjoy. Maybe it's bike rides with the kids on the weekend, mm -hmm. but you need to find something that you're going to enjoy that you're going to stick with. That's going to help get you results in addition to kind of cleaning up your nutrition. Mm -hmm. And I will, I will kind of close with this is goes kind of goes back to what not close totally, but in terms of this question, uh, it, it totally goes back to, you know, not having enough time. If you, make the time to make the healthy food, you will recognize that the more you do that, the more time you will have. So I personally am not a great cook. I will admit that in public, <laughs> but I do cook good food and I only cook every couple of days. And so I'll do a lot of meal prep, let's say on like Sunday, and that will feed us Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And then Wednesday, I sit down, you know, so I make a lot more food and then I have it for several meals. Mm -hmm. And then I don't have to cook on Monday. I don't have to cook on Tuesday. I might cook on Wednesday and I don't have to cook Thursday, Friday, you know, and maybe go out Saturday. So I'm really only cooking a couple of times a week. And I know, I can't remember the last time I went to the drive-thru because I was always prepared. I always had something as a snack, you know, carrots and celery in my car, uh, a small serving of almonds an apple, you know, real food that I was able to have in a pinch so that it could keep me away from the fast food options, which are no good for me and make my gut unhappy. So there's a lot of things you guys can do. Starts with food, 
find an exercise regimen that you enjoy. And uh, if you don't know what to do, ask somebody and uh, they'll definitely help you out and stay away from the, the pre-processed stuff. Thank you for that advice and for recommending the whole 30 book. I'm going to go out and get my copy soon. Um, Cause yeah, I, the part that I really struggle with is, is the part around food cause I don't like to cook. So um, I agree with you that the more we plan and prepare in advance, then we're not, you know, in the quandary of what do we have to eat and just grabbing things that aren't healthy for us. And I love your acronym of just eat real food. Mm -hmm. um, it can be challenging because I'll just be honest, as someone, um, when I started working with my nutritionist, she told me something similar, you know, what I'm going to eat, just don't eat processed food. And I literally would have to text her when I was going out for breakfast, like, well, does this count as real food? Because I'm so used to eating pancakes, like, well, I'm not eating pancakes. But what about like um, French toast? Like what? It, like because as a city girl, we're so far removed from our food production, and it really did take um, some time to learn what counts as real food, what is whole food. You know, how can you consume it? And some meals for me, breakfast was my hardest one because I realized that was my dessert. <laughs> that I was just counting as breakfast. Um, and so, yeah, it, it can be a big challenge, but if once we learn what whole food is and, and we fill our plates with it, um, you're absolutely right. We already start to notice differences in our mood and that becomes a foundation for an even larger kind of commitment to health and wellness in our lives. So now I want to ask you about um, what advice you would give for people who actually have been successful and have reached that target goal, if it's a number, if it's a dress size, if it's, um, you know, I successfully completed this 21 day, you know, 90 day program. Mm -hmm. What do we do um, then? Or what if somebody has reached the plateau? you know, what can they do at that time to continue to build health and wellness? Sure. Oh, great question. Those are two, almost two questions. So I'll, I'll tackle them separately. Okay. Uh, and, and I've been in both situations, so I can speak from the heart. So let, I'll talk about plateaus quickly. Um, I, I don't know, quickly, but first, um, plateau. So first of all, you have to ask yourself, is it really a plateau? Uh, it's not really a plateau if it's been four days and the scale hasn't moved, okay? A plateau is really a much longer period of time. But uh, sometimes if you're in a plateau, it's because your body has settled into a happy weight, okay? And so if you're in the correct BMI range, okay, body mass index range for your height, and you're just trying to get to a certain number, stop and reevaluate and maybe just work on your body composition. You know, mm. uh, you might not really be in a plateau. It just might be that your body has decided that that's a healthy weight for you. And if you want to look different, you need to change the shape of your body. Mm. Uh, if you are indeed in a plateau and you've been doing something longer than 90 days, that's bound to happen. It is time to switch it up. Mm. So what are some things that you can do? You can definitely change up your exercise regimen for women. That means more weights, less cardio. For the most part, I have to diagnose everybody <laughs> individually, mm -hmm. but for the most part, that means more weights, less cardio. Um, then also take a look at what you're eating. Are you eating a lot of dairy? Um, are you eating a lot of carbs in the evening? Are you eating a lot of fruit? Fruit is good, but too much of a good thing in excess doesn't necessarily help you reach your goals. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a plateau, first, you know, make sure that it's not a a vanity number that you're going towards is your is your plateau really truly a plateau um if it's been long enough then try and switch some things up in terms of your workouts mm -hmm. as well as what you're eating you know maybe less carbs you know, don't eat less carbs but push them more towards your morning and breakfast meals and then uh, maybe less in the evening and then watch things like dairy and fruits you know sugar um things that are you know the human body was not meant to process dairy and so some people don't recognize that that's what's holding them back from achieving, achieving their, their goals if they're on a plateau. So that's the first part of it. And I have so been there. So I, <laughs> I know exactly 
uh, you know, what to kind of change up and, and work on it and get that, you know, get that moving again. And then in terms of what do you do when you reach your goals? Okay, I've been there, right? And, and I've also been there where I've reached my goals and I've done the wrong things and I went in the opposite direction, right? So number one, what you don't want to do is completely go off the rails, all right? And I'll give you an example of when you get a flat tire, you don't go and you don't go slash your other three tires, all right? So if you've reached your goal weight or your goal size or whatever it might be, and then you turn around and you've gained five pounds, don't go off the rails and go back, you know, crazy. Figure out what's going on, reassess, and get back to it, all right? But I'm... Uh, also speaking from experience, the kind of person that have, has pretty much, I mean, I'm always a work in progress, but I've pretty much gotten to my happy weight, my happy size for my frame. And it's really about balance. So if you were following a specific regimen, let's say, you know, you got your goal in, in six months. Now it's time to do something different or do the same thing with slight modifications. Okay. So does that mean a lot of times that might be maybe just instead of losing a pound, a healthy pound a week, then adding maybe 10 or 20% more food to your plate so you're now maintaining. It's really about living a healthy, balanced life. You know, just like Dr. Moore will, will work with her people on and share with people, it's about finding balance. It's not about going to extremes. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that, you know, once you lose the weight or once you get into that, that perfect goal size or whatever, it doesn't make your life complete. It just makes you better on the inside, which allows you to be better on the outside, all right, and, and, and be able to be a better person in society, you know what I'm saying? Be a better role example, you know, role model for your family, and, and maybe motivate and encourage some of your friends to, you know, stop watching so many movies and get their 30-minute workout in. <laughs> So uh, it's really about finding balance, uh, you know, maybe increasing a little bit of calories, but not going off the rails and, you know, just kind of, you know, doing that 80, 20, 20, you know, where you're, you're on point 80% of the time, but then you're also letting yourself splurge a little bit. Yes. Thank you so much for that. And realizing that, yeah, we can um, continue to support our fitness without necessarily, you know, going totally back to where we've come from or, um, you know, going so small that we actually become invisible because we, we don't want to be there. But you mentioned um, changing the shape of our body. Like once we've reached our goal, maybe focusing on body composition. Could you elaborate more about what that means? Yes, absolutely. And a lot of the things that I teach are as a result of what I've learned in my own body. All mm -hmm. right. So as a woman in my 40s, um, I used running as a way to lose weight years ago. And I lost the weight, but, and I look at pictures and I just, I can't believe it. But uh, I was kind of what you consider the skinny fat, you know? I was the number on the scale I wanted to see, but I had a lot of uh, weight in my midsection and I didn't have any muscle tone. And I didn't look the weight that I was. I looked a lot better than when I was over 210 pounds, but I didn't look the weight that I was. And totally random circumstance happened to me. And I started doing a weightlifting program. And we're not going to name it because we're not about, you know, I don't want to go and that's just one thing that worked for me. But uh, I started a weightlifting program that I completed in 90 days and it totally changed the shape of my body. Mm -hmm. And it was three days of weights and three days of cardio and some stretching in there too. And I look at pictures and I weighed exactly the same from the two, the 290 days. And I look at the pictures of before I started that program from running like a lot of miles and I don't run that much anymore because I have bad knees too. <laughs> and then incorporating weightlifting and my body completely changed. And those are some of the biggest compliments that I would get after I would complete you know, after I completed that was, you look amazing. And you know what? I felt amazing too. And I was not muscular and I was not manly. I was lean. Mm -hmm. And that was one thing that worked for me. And ever since, and cardio is for some people and they hate lifting weights and I help them with that. But if a woman wants to change the shape of her body, she needs to lift weights. Mm -hmm. 
and that worked for me and I actually prefer it over cardio as well mm -hmm. and so I do a mix of but uh, that's definitely one thing that you know if somebody's looking at somebody's at their their goal weight but not goal size if they want to look different if they want to drop the size that's what I work with them on is to uh, to lift more weight. So just eat real food and lift more weight. <laughs> love it. Love it. Thank you for sharing. And yeah, I know it can be sometimes intimidating for women to go into the gym and, and do the weightlifting part of the routine. So thank you for sharing with us about how lifting weights, you know, uh, doesn't automatically turn us into a man now. And, you know, we can look strong and healthy and beautiful. Um, and it's, part of a, a total body package of um, transformation. So I really have appreciated you taking time out of your very busy day to share all these valuable insights with us. But before I let you go, I wanted to ask if you had any additional information that you could share with the audience about additional resources that we could use to um, help move us towards our goals and, and our health and wellness. Yeah. Um, additional resources. Well, I gave my biggest tip, which was the whole foods. And like I said, uh, you know, the whole 30, I'm not associated with that, but I fully believe in the power of that. Um, you don't have to do the whole 30. It just kind of shows you how eating certain foods, um, is, is going to help your body. Uh, in terms of other resources, you know what I would say too, is look at somebody that you know has had success and not some crazy you know crazy crash diet or anything like that but look at somebody in your community whether it's a family member or somebody at your church or something like that who has had success and go ask them what they've done and go ask a couple of people and figure out what worked for them and see if they can help you and if none of those options are available for you call me <laughs> I will totally, you know, everything is customizable. Everything is, uh, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody gets a different recommendation. But um, I would definitely say check out Whole30 and then look at other successful people who you trust and believe and can give you a good reference mm -hmm. and see what they got going on and see if that's going to work for you. Great advice. And if we wanted to call you, mm -hmm. how would we find out um, – how to get in touch with you and learn more about the programs that you have for us. Sure. So um, pretty easy to find me. Uh, Excel with Mel, E-X-C-E-L with Mel, M-E-L. So Excel with Mel.com. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. Uh, pretty much you can find me. So my phone number and my email is on all of those mediums. Uh, send me a message. Send me a text. Uh, let's just talk. My, 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 Time is totally free, so um, we'd love to talk to you and see if I can help you in any way. All right. Thank you. You're very busy on social media. You're on every platform. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you were just sharing with me before we began about a really exciting kind of um, holiday program that you have coming up to help us not um, work against our total fitness goals over the holiday. Would you like to just give um, our audience just a, a brief introduction to what that program looks like so they can speak with you later for more information? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I really, uh, and I think since we talked last, I've come up with two things. So there's a seven day and there's a 30 day. Okay. So um, if you guys know that you're going to be indulging over Thanksgiving holiday, and you want something to combat that one day, but you're willing to get back on track for seven days, I have a little seven day group that I'm hosting it. It's all online, so you don't have to go anywhere. It's gonna be done in your kitchen. And then I'm also hosting a 30 day group to go between Thanksgiving and Christmas to keep us kind of on the right track. So if either of those interest you at all, uh, you know, you can find me on social media, you can contact me, and uh, I would love to tell you more. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for just creating that resource for us. I was um, just at a meeting today where someone was sharing with me that I think uh, the research suggests that we spend five months working off the amount of um, weight that we gain in, in the five weeks of this holiday season. So um, it's a much uh, needed 
fix that we have. And thank you for giving us some tangible resources that we can do without saying we're, you know, giving up Thanksgiving <laughs> or giving up our holiday parties because, um, yeah, that's part of the fun of the holiday season. But we can do it in a way that does not undermine our goals. Um, and I, I appreciate you helping us to think about how we can do that. So thank you so much for taking the time to share your wisdom and insight with us. Um, thank you to all of our audience members who join us for this wonderful conversation. Please, if you do have other questions, do reach out to Mel, Excel with Mel. And if you have questions for me or suggestions for other topics that we can do, please do reach out to me um, at Life and Focus Coaching. And uh, my web address is yourlifeinfocuscoach.com. And you can also reach me at Keisha Moore at yourlifeinfocuscoach.com. So thank you. Happy holidays to you, Mel. Happy holidays to everyone. It's been a pleasure talking with you and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Moore.